And instead of moving to where we know people, we chose a completely different area and said, okay, this is where we're going. Hello, welcome to episode 201 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by returning guest Katie McCowan. Since our last conversation all the way back in August of 2021, Katie has relocated and left the Florida market she launched her real estate career in. Landing in Wisconsin, Katie has hit the ground running, closing 16 deals her first year at the time of recording our interview. Throughout our conversation, Katie shares how she set herself up for success by creating content for her new market before actually making the move, how her approach has changed with the new market demographics, and how starting over in a new market has re-energized her career. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Katie McCowan. Be sure to follow her on Instagram at move to Wisconsin. I've got a link in the episode description. So yeah, really the way I like to start everything off is, is if you could uh, reintroduce yourself to us. You're returning from a couple years ago and just uh, love to uh, get a little bit of your background again. Yeah, so I'm Katie McCowan. I am now a duly licensed agent. So I'm licensed in Florida and now Wisconsin. Um, I've been licensed for nine years now and um, recently came up to Wisconsin to start over in a new market where I don't know a soul um, because why make things easy when I can make them difficult? (laughs) Um, And yeah, so here I am. (laughs) Right. So tell me, you know, about uh, just, you know, uh, for anybody that hadn't heard the the last time we spoke, just um, a little background on, on yourself. How did you get into real estate uh, to begin with? Yeah. So my dad was in real estate and um, I just was not liking my career path and he wanted someone to eventually take over the business so he could retire. So he told me, go get your real estate license. And I was kind of like, not sure how I feel about that. Um, but here I am nine years later and I absolutely love it. So it was a great career path choice for me and I do not regret it one bit. Yeah. So what, uh, what was it that brought you up to Wisconsin? Um, uh, we just were looking for a change of lifestyle. I love Florida. Florida will always be near and dear to my heart, but, um, I'm not a fan of the heat anymore or hurricanes. We got hit by Hurricane Ian two two years ago. um, And that was kind of the point where we were like, "Um, well, you know, when we have kids, we really don't want to have to put them through that. And, you know, it's very scary for us. And um, my husband, born and raised in Florida. I'm actually from Wisconsin originally. Um, So we had been coming up here and traveling and everything. And... We were like, you know what? Wisconsin sounds great. Let's go there. Um, And instead of moving to where we know people, we chose a completely different area and said, okay, this is where we're going. And we came up here on like a little road trip, picked this area out of three different places. And two weeks later, put an offer in on a house in an incredibly hot market, which it's still super hot. And we somehow got lucky and beat out eight other offers on our First house we put an offering on and a month later we moved here. So, and we have not looked back. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I definitely want to dive into the, the idea of, you know, starting over in a new, a new market. You know, you had established a real estate career, established a sphere of influence in Florida. uh, And then, you know, it's all of a sudden you're, you're brand new again in the market. What was that? What was that like? And how did you prepare yourself for making that move? 
Um, so it was absolutely terrifying because like you said, like I've lived in Florida for, or I had lived in Florida for 19 years at that point. Um, and I was like, am I really going to do this? But again, I love this career. And I was like, I can replicate that business here, right? It's just getting out and knowing people. So, um, I have a real estate coach and he, helped set me up for this. You know, we started months in advance when I told him, Hey, we're moving to Wisconsin. So, you know, we did our market research to know what kind of market I was coming into and obviously getting to know some of the brokers around here and things like that. Um, so that I could really set myself up for success. You know, I started doing videos that I had prepared. So once I was licensed, I could just, you know, hit the ground running and really get that going to make a name for myself because, you know, I am not a person to be shy and quiet. And um, so that was my goal was let me um, start with a bang and, you know, put myself out there because, I mean, what better way to get people to know you than video and things like that. So that's where I started. Um, and it seems to be going great. I, you know, in Florida, I worked a lot by referral as well as through social media. And I am quickly growing a sphere here by just getting out and starting to know people and um, building those relationships with other local business owners. You know, I went from a area that had over a million people to this area has 300,000. So much smaller town. Um, and, you know, just going out there and talking to the local florists and the local coffee shop owner and things like that. Um, I mean, I just had a junk removal guy at my house the other day to take some stuff to the dump. And, you know, one of the first things he said was, oh, I saw you followed me on Instagram. Is that how you found me? I said, yep. And we started talking and he ended up, you know, following me back on Instagram. And he was like, I am brand new to the area and I love the content that you're putting out there. He's like, you know, for people who don't know the area, like myself, and that's kind of where I came from was, you know, what can I show people about the area that's not only real estate, but give them a glimpse into what it's like living in the Northeast Wisconsin area. So that was my whole goal was just, you know, like I said, here's this local coffee shop that's got great coffees. They switch them up every month. Here's this great park, that type of stuff. And that has helped me gain a lot of traction very quickly here. So. Yeah. And I really I like that idea of, you know, doing that as you know, you're showing, um, you're almost showing your, your own experience in relocating somewhere and finding these places that you didn't know anything about. And you're presenting them to, to other folks that might be relocating or, you know, have been members of the community and, and maybe not, uh, frequently, you know, have gone to those coffee shops or, you know, places. Yep, for sure. I mean, and I think, you know, obviously, yes, I sprinkle my real estate in there because that's important. I do sell houses, <laughs> but I have realized being almost like a digital mayor, if you will, of the area has helped me build those relationships and that rapport versus just slamming real estate down someone's throat because, um, you know, it's like Gary V, the jab, 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 right hook thing. So like I'm giving all of that value, the, the fun things to do, the parks, the all that stuff. And then I sprinkle in that real estate. So people do know that, yes, that is what I do, but I'm more than just a salesperson who just, that's all I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and, and you mentioned earlier, um, even before you, before you actually made the move, you know, starting to do your research and actually putting together some of these videos. So tell me a little bit about that and, um, you know, just how much that has, actually benefited you when you did, you know, move to where you already had, you know, the content prepared and you're able to start rolling things out. Yeah. I mean, it, it obviously helped me tremendously because, you know, thankfully with the internet in this day and age, we have access to so much. So I was able to study the market and kind of understand what was going on here as well as like in Florida, I had like my, um, 
green evergreen videos where you know it was like hey here's how to buy a house in florida and everything like that so taking that time as like i was going through my classes and learning the different um things that happen here versus in other states i was able to create those videos so that you know i can put out like here's how you buy a house in Wisconsin. Here is the difference between buying a house here and maybe buying a house somewhere else so that people understand because I have realized, um, and I'm talking to many other people and I've had some agents that have referred clients to me already where they're moving back to Wisconsin or they are just choosing to move to Wisconsin because of the climate and, you know, Winters aren't as crazy anymore, but, you know, we kind of have where you can be outdoors most of the year. So um, this is becoming a hot area for people to move to. So I just, you know, people coming from an outside standpoint, like um, me, like we did not use obviously now we're getting ready to. But previously, Florida didn't use buyer agency agreements. Wisconsin does. So, you know, a lot of people don't know that and they be, may be like, well, why do I need to use that? Like, you know oh. what I mean? So explaining that stuff so that people can understand what they need to look forward to when, you know, working with an agent, whether it be me, hopefully it's me or someone else, um, they kind of know what, what to expect. Um, and then, you know, just doing tours of like the area and things like that so that you know that was one thing when we were looking to move here we were like okay well we don't we don't know a single thing about this area we just kind of picked it because we liked the way it looked <laughs> but we were here for a day and a half and we chose this area so you know we went on youtube and we found some videos and things like that of you know people giving tours and whatnot but i realized when i talked with my coach like I could bring that up to the next level and, you know, give that more in depth. So that's what I started doing because if myself as an agent is looking at an area to move to, like other people are doing the same thing. And, you know, not a lot of people have the opportunity to say, Hey, let me go check this area out before we have to move here. Cause we're getting transferred for jobs or whatever it may be. So if I can provide that insight in video form for someone to be able to go on and look and say, okay, great. Like we know where we're going to live. And you know, this area yeah, has three, roughly 300,000 people, but it's made up of so many little different towns. So, you know, and everyone's different. So it just depends on where you want to live. So I think providing that information really helps people out and knowing what they want. Right. Absolutely. And I think it's really smart, you know, for anybody listening to this, regardless of your, your market size is, you know, to go on the YouTubes and, and Google that kind of stuff, you know, um, a day in the life of whatever your town name is or, you know, top 10 things to do. And you'll be really surprised that there's not a lot of video content out there mm -hmm. in a lot of towns around, you know, the country. And that's, that's really easy and honestly kind of fun content to create as an agent. It, it really is. And for me coming up here, like I was in an area where, it was, there was a ton of agents and everybody was doing video, you know, and I came up here and yes, there are people doing video, but not like I saw in Florida. So I looked at that as an opportunity to, you know, gain that corner of the internet, whatever you want to call it to attract those people. Because, you know, Florida, there was, you know, every 20 agents, 19 of them were doing video, you know, here you may have 20 agents, maybe 10, 12 are do doing video. So, um, you know, chances of standing out are a lot higher. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. What, um, you know, and I think when people do that type of marketing, the content marketing, um, you know, you really, you really do have to treat it as, you know, part of your, your marketing dollars and regard, you know, if it was doing any kind of mailings or anything like that, I mean, you're, you're putting the time and investment into it and, and really treating, um, you know, the time that you are taking to do that as part of your marketing, uh, you know, strategy. And, and like you said, you, you know, you're already getting great results from it just with, uh, the reputation that it's, it's, you know, building up your name with the, the businesses in the area. Yep. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's if anybody 
is moving to a new area, I would highly suggest doing that because I think it made a world of a difference and not wanting to be a secret agent because again, I'm leaving a market where I have built an insane business. I lived there for 19 years, you know what I mean? And thankfully I can refer that stuff out. So I, you know, still see that residual income from referrals, which is great. Um, but I don't want to rely on that solely. I want to build my, my market here. So, um, definitely has been a huge help. Yeah. When you were, um, you know, in the process of, of moving there, um, you know, and having the experience that you did, how did that change your, your process of finding a brokerage, you know, to work with? So I had actually, until I moved here, never interviewed for a brokerage before. So my dad was in real estate and I got my license. I automatically went to the same brokerage as him. We decided to leave that brokerage after many years. I went with him and then um, he passed away and that brokerage just wasn't working for me anymore. So I had known that broker for a very long time. So it was just one of those things where I just went. So I had never done an interview with a broker before. So I was like, okay, well, probably going to be insane, but let me schedule, you know, 12 appointments with 12 different brokers. <laughs> and um, I did. And it definitely was an eye opener. I mean, again, you know, Wisconsin is very different from Florida. I actually appreciate it. <laughs> and, um, you know, just seeing the differences in brokers and obviously what they can offer you, especially being an agent who's coming into a new area. You know, um, I absolutely adore my brokers here. They have been fantastic in, you know, getting me out there to get to know other agents and, you know, to be involved in the public. So that way I can build that business and build people knowing who I am. And then, you know, I think one of the biggest things too was, you know, I almost felt like a new agent again. Yes, I know what I'm doing, but yeah. I'm coming into a new area with different techniques and different things. And, um, you know, having that training and knowing that your broker is going to provide that training, like that was huge for me because I think that right there also helped me level up and succeed in a way that I don't know that I would have, you know, if I just went somewhere else. Um, so I think, you know, interviewing with all those different brokers, it really helped me see what I want in a brokerage because I had never done that before. So. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Well, and I think it's also really cool. You know, the, the idea of, you know, uh, being in your career nearly 10 years and, um, you know, having to start over again, I, I almost feel like it kind of re reinvigorates you and kind of mm -hmm. gets the wheels turning again. Maybe, you know, it, it's a very natural thing to get complacent with, with certain things or the way you've been doing things. And then having to start from scratch again, it really kind of makes you, you know, get all the juices flowing again. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, like I, I always tell people like, again, yeah, I have nine years behind me, but I am essentially a brand new agent in this marketplace. Right. So like having all of that, knowledge behind me and my systems and my processes has obviously helped me level up, I'd say quicker too. And like you said, like it's ignited something in me because I'm like, okay, like I can do this 10 times better now than when I started nine years ago. So that has like made me even more excited because the level of service that I've learned to provide to people when I'm helping them buy, sell, whatever it may be, um, has, you know, leveled up over the years. And now I'm like, okay, I can offer this to people right off the bat. And, you know, it's been, it's been great. And I, I think, um, being able to do things the way I'm doing, like I look back and I wish I would have done that, you know, nine, 10 years ago. And I'm like, wow, this is great. Like, and it does because I come from this place of helping people. And yes, obviously at the end of the day, we all need to get paid. That's one part of buying and selling and everything, you know, but you know, to be able to 
help people through things. You know, when you've got someone who is selling their childhood home and, you know, to be able to help them through that process and make it as simple and rewarding for them as possible has just been fantastic. Yeah. In the two markets that you're in, uh, you know, with the size difference in the two markets, uh, how have you, how is the, you know, just the, the seller profile or even, you know, the way, um, you know, sellers or buyers, you know, respond to certain types of marketing or even types of businesses. How has that been different? Um, well, Florida, I feel was very, um, they were more so on social and things like that. Right. Like, because you have a lot, um, younger clientele, especially with sellers, right? Um, versus here, I think things are a little bit more old school. So that has required me to go back to my roots of when I did get started and things were a little bit more old school, right? And so like I'm sending those letters and those handwritten cards, I'm going and knocking on the doors to talk to people because not everybody here is on social media. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, where I lived in Florida, like a lot of people came from up in the Midwest and the Northeast to move down to Florida once they were retired because, you know, everybody wants to live in Florida. So, um, and so I was always on the receiving end of them coming down. So now I'm on that, um, helping them start from the beginning and, I get to kind of walk them through that process and, you know, they don't, again, a lot of them don't do like the internet and things like that. So, you know, being able to nurture them and walk them through them, those steps, you know, I kind of have to have two, two different ways to do it. Like, yeah, I have my, here's your emails, here's the, you know, internet DocuSign, that type of stuff versus, okay, I'm going to print everything out. I'm going to come over to your house and we're going to go through it. So it's, it's definitely been a little bit of a learning curve because I wasn't used to that. I was used to very fast pace and things like that. But, uh, I've been a very appreciative of being able to kind of like step back and slow down and, you know, you get to know people better and you get to spend more time with them and, you know, really get to build those relationships, which I think is fantastic. Right. And I have to imagine, you know, the, um, you know, the video content that you're doing and the meeting, the, the different, you know, business owners that really has to play a big part in that word of mouth, um, you know, marketing and the, uh, the referrals that you're getting. Cause if these people are not on the internet, you know, it, it having those business owners that do interact with so many more people throughout the day, you know, building those relationships has to really go a long way in, um, you know, getting these clients that, that might be not fine, might not find you, uh, in your videos. Oh, a hundred percent. And I mean, you know, we have a lot of young people obviously buying houses here too, and you've got younger people moving to the Midwest. Um, so, you know, you might have the grandkid that sees me on social media and their grandparents are talking about wanting to sell their house and move to Florida. And, you know, because I'm doing more than just here's real estate, here's real estate, you know, they are following me because of that stuff and staying and then can refer their grandparents, their parents, you know, who may not be interested in being on the internet and seeing that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's really cool about that type of uh, content marketing is, is you're really getting, you know, it's that two pronged approach is, you know, you're getting the people that are that are seeing you online mm -hmm. and viewing the videos. But then you're also at the same time building those relationships with the business owners. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, it's it's great. And I think it it's well rounded and keeps me humble. <laughs> well, before uh, before we wrap up, tell me, you know, what are some of the the more immediate goals and then, you know, some of the more long term goals as you, you know, settle in to Wisconsin and, and really get things going there? Yeah, um, I didn't even think about this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, my immediate goal this year um, out the gate was to do 18 transactions. 
Um, and I'm already at 16 for the year. So, um, you know, I kind of was like, okay, I need to take a step back. I'm going into new and into a new market and things like that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely cranking along. Obviously some of those are still, um, from Florida cause I do do a little bit down there. Um, but working more so up here. So, you know, long-term goal would obviously be to eventually, step completely back from Florida so that I can solely be here. I, I, I'm doing pretty well at that now <laughs> with referring things out because it gets tiring going back and forth oh, yeah. a lot. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I really do appreciate you, you talking to me. I think it's awesome. You know, like I said, I think it's really cool. Um, and I, I think, you know, there has to be something to the idea of, you know, starting fresh again and just kind of re- re getting the wheels going again and just kind of lighten that fire again. Cause, uh, if you do things the same way for too long, it, it can get complacent. Yep. For sure. I mean, if anybody uh, gets complacent, just move to a new area because you will <laughs> reignite your fire. <laughs> right. Well, and even, you know, maybe just, you know, maybe there's a, a neighborhood or, or somewhere, you know, just down the street that you do, haven't done a whole lot in and, you know, go explore that area a little bit more. Yep. For sure. I mean, I think, you know, like I said, change is difficult, but it helps us all grow. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, it'll make us a better people at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, tell people where they can, uh, can find your, uh, content if they want to check it out. Yeah. Um, so I'm on social media. At, um, my handle is move to Wisconsin on everything. So that's where they can find me. That's a pretty good one. If you're looking to move to Wisconsin, that that'll come up in the search. Yeah, exactly. And I was surprised that nobody had taken it yet. So I was like, well, I'm going to grab this real quick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad that, uh, glad you looked for that because that is a big one. I'm sure if, uh, if it hasn't been taken in other states, people are going to be looking it up real fast and, uh, yeah, grab for them. sure. Well, take it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, talk with us again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I want to thank Katie for joining us today and sharing what it's been like to relaunch a real estate career in a brand new market. Remember, you can find Katie on Instagram at move to Wisconsin. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.